let's get going then, shall we? Um, so first of all, thank you for joining me this evening um, for the auction preview. Just a quick note to those who are on the GEMA mailing list. Unfortunately, Maureen's event on Enamel, that's been moved to next June now. Um, so I'm just sort of standing in for the June slot. So uh, do bear with me. So the sale will take place on the 17th of June. Um, if you'd like any further info on the lots, then obviously give me an email. Liz.bailey at wilson55.com. We'll start first off with the 2.21 carat diamond. So this one's in a platinum setting. It's 2.21 carats and it comes with an EGL cert stating that it is D colour and SI2 clarity. So yeah, a couple of these diamonds, they're from a lovely private individual who was very into, into the gemstones and thankfully they've come through to auction. So Moving on to the 3.4 carat diamond. This is one of my favorites. It really is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So estimated M to N color. So drawing very slightly on the color, but VVS clarity, it's a really beautiful stone. So this one's offered at 9,000 to 14,000 pounds. And next up, lot number 99, this is, the, uh, this is the big four carat one. So again, set in platinum, four carats, estimated colour J to K and clarity SI2 to P1. Um, and again, this one is nine to 14,000 pounds, but really is a uh, stonker of a stone. Thirty-five. this is a pair of diamond stud earrings. Now, in every single auction, I get people asking me, have you got diamond stud earrings? Have you got diamond stud earrings? Everybody needs a pair. Um, and these are great weight, 2.45 carats combined, I to J colour and drawing a little bit on the clarity, P1, P2 clarity, but set in 14 karat gold. And these are at two to 3,000 pounds. So on to lot number 31, this gorgeous diamond bracelet. Lovely take on the uh, classic tennis bracelet, obviously with those lovely diamond clusters. So yeah, this has got approximately 3.2 carats. Um, it's in a 14 carat gold setting. Absolutely gorgeous piece. Again, from a private Cheshire lady. And estimated here at two to 3,000 pounds. Lot number 48. Another gorgeous little piece, diamond heart pendant. It's a take on a classic Victorian design, but it is a modern piece, this one. So it's got about two carats worth of diamonds in there. And yeah, just a lovely uh, show-stopping piece, that one. And then so as not to leave the gents in the room out, we've got these uh, lovely diamond cufflinks, these designer cufflinks by Enigma. There we go, you've got a parve set diamond arrow to each of them, so they're quite sort of novel uh, pieces, but they stand out. And these are offered at 450 to 650. So as I take this tray away, we'll... Uh, Step back in time to one of the store, well, the star jewellery lot of this sale. Being this lovely rose cut diamond and blue enamel dress ring. But yeah, it's set with a obviously a lovely rose cut diamond here. It's about one and a half carat, this one, just estimating it from the from the dimensions. Set in this lovely royal blue enamel setting. And you know, this on its own obviously is a beautiful, beautiful design, but when you couple it with its uh, provenance and the story behind the piece, it really makes it something quite special. So this piece was consigned from a private vendor who's inherited the piece after it's been in a noble family for centuries. It says to the back of the setting, given by King Charles II to the Honourable Charles Bertie, son of Montague, Earl of Lindsay in 1649. So obviously a significant, significant piece. 1649 again was a massive year for the uh, 
for the royal family. So it marks the year of Charles I's execution and Charles II was appointed as King of Scotland in February, whilst in exile from England. He was living in The Hague at the time, and it's likely that this ring, this diamond, was commissioned as a token of gesture for thanks for the family's loyalty and service to the royalist cause. So the diamond itself was probably originally presented in a set of buttons or a ring, and the second Earl of Lindsay, uh, he actually had five sons, so this Charles Bertie is the youngest. He would have been nine years old when the diamond was gifted to him. And yes, Montague Bertie, so the dad, the second Earl of Lindsay, he was a royalist, obviously. He raised a regiment in the cavalry of Lincolnshire at the outbreak of the Civil War. Uh, he was later arrested at Warwick Castle, and there he wrote a declaration of loyalty to the king, so a really uh, devout royalist. He was released in 1643, and he uh, subsequently became a colonel of the king's lifeguards of foot, and he was loyal until the end, supported Charles I up until his execution, and even accompanied the body to the burial. They were absolutely loyal. Obviously, he would have been witnessed by his son, Charles II, and subsequently the diamond was given. Now, it's been mounted in a later setting, as you can see from the, uh, the blue enamel and the, the design of the ring. And this is not an unusual phenomenon, really. Diamonds, we know, were gifted by Charles II. We know this to be true by a famous example exhibited at the Met Museum. So this was a diamond cluster gifted by Charles II to Nell Gwynne. This piece, the Nell Gwynne piece, bears a similar inscription to the reverse and has also been later reset. So, you know, it's, it's following a trend, this one, and it is really highly plausible given the uh, direct lineage of the piece as well. So yeah, amazing piece of history to, uh, to behold, really. Fantastic piece. And uh, it's come from, a, obviously, a, a noble family, obviously been inherited. So this is lot number 113 in the sale, and it's offered with an estimate of 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. Jumping forward again in time, we're onto the uh, tray of signed pieces. So first of all, this uh, amazing, amazing piece that came in from a private collector, let me Eighteen karat gold. Obviously, as you can see, the uh, the gemmy ladies and gents of the audience will see their uh, polished amethyst crystals. Obviously, typical of of sixties jewellery to have those uh, rough crystals in there. This is actually dated in nineteen sixty five and signed Gross. So yeah, so this maker is mainly known for costume jewellery. They were founded in nineteen oh seven and created costume jewellery most notably for Christian Dior from 1955 onwards. Um, they still produce gold-plated and paste pieces to this day. And so it's really very rare to find a piece by Gross that is set in gold with actual gemstones. So this piece is 18 karat gold. It's, it bears import marks, interestingly, for George Jensen. Um, so obviously they would have imported it and then retailed it. It's come to us in fantastic condition. It even has a fitted case that it came in. So it's as good as the day it was bought. Really is a, a fabulous, interesting piece. Which leads me on to, quite nicely, uh, lot number 72. The silver George Jensen dress ring. Now this is pattern number 91. This one is offered at 100 to 200 pounds. Another designer that's highly popular at auction is uh, Tiffany & Co. This little heart brooch here, uh, it's lot number one, so it's sort of been the poster child for the sale, really, this one, um, consigned from a lady who lived in America for many years, so obviously was purchased in the 80s during her time there. It's in the heart design by Paloma Picasso, and it's just, it's just lovely. I think it's really wearable, obviously, very contemporary, 
and it's offered with the maker's box as well so you get everything with it and it's good to go so this is offered at five to seven hundred pounds another tiffany and co maker which is uh, proven particularly popular at the moment is elsa coretti obviously unfortunately following her death earlier this year so this bangle it's quite reminiscent of the bone cuff bangles that she's popular for it's actually dated this piece so it's uh, dated 1984 so 10 years following her creating jewelry for tiffany and co really stylish piece and we've had lots of interest in this. so again this one's offered very reasonable estimate 100 to 200 pounds pounds then moving on to local interest obviously we are the uh, northwest gemme so we have got a couple of northern pieces here we've got this lovely brooch here i'm sure you can instantly recognize what he is so it's a nine carat gold liver bird brooch uh, made by alabaster and wilson so this was commissioned and made by alabaster and wilson as a presentation piece to the Lady Mayoress of Liverpool from 1935 to 1936. So it's hallmarked for 1943, so it's a sort of commemorative piece from her time of service. This piece has been very, very popular. It's been in the Liverpool Echo, it's been uh, all over, so highly popular piece and we're expecting it to sell really well. Lot number five, we've got another Mayoress brooch here, but this time the Mayoress of Macclesfield, so a little bit closer to home, we'd be in the uh, northwest. This one, again, nine carat gold and uh, created, as you can see, by Garrard & Co. It's got the original fitted case there. And this one is offered at 120 to £220. And onwards we go to our next tray. <laughs> Pre-prepared tray, uh, our antique jewellery tray. So these are my uh, top antique picks from the sale. Got this lovely piece, lot number forty-two, peridot in uh, sea pearl brooch slash pendant. Obviously, the typical open work design here. So this uh, it's in fifteen karat gold, and um, as opposed to sort of nine karat gold that you do typically see. So really nice piece with lovely little peridots in there, and it is obviously, as you can see, with its original fitted case. So this is offered at two to three hundred pounds. And it's a... Now, another piece that came through on a valuation day is lot number 65. This fantastic piece was inherited by the vendor from their next door neighbour. So um, absolutely fantastic story behind that and very fortunate indeed. They uh, didn't have any idea about what this piece was and yeah, they bought it in, but had no idea what it was worth. And lo and behold, I told them it's one and a half to two and a half thousand pounds. As you can see, it's got the gorgeous enamel, red enamel frame there, and all those lovely opals centering a, an old cut diamond. And it's by Mrs. Newman. So uh, this is the first woman artist jeweler. She started her career working for John Brogdon. She opened her first shop in 1894 and carried on until the early 20th century. These pieces don't come up for sale or often. They tend to be quite sort of collector's pieces. And, you know, the beauty of it is no two pieces are the same, really. She did a lot of unique, different, beautiful designs, really. And again, this has got the fitted case, which is absolutely exceptional. Now, a few of these pieces have come from a, a Cheshire lady um, downsizing and selling her collection. And so lot number 57, typical uh, Victorian onyx and diamond mourning locket. So I've seen a few of these obviously with sort of split pearl monogram to the front, but this is set with just over a carat's worth of old cut diamonds. So really, really nice opulent piece here and in great condition, as you can see, as you turn over, as you can expect, there's a cheerful looking Victorian lady on the back there. So this again, it's lot number 57 and it's offered at six to 800 pounds. Another lovely little locket from the uh, collection is lot number 52. 
This is a Victorian foil back garnet and diamond bug pendant. And again, this has got the uh, lovely little diamond bug set into the cabochon there. At the back of this piece, you've got your classic glazed panel there. So this is lot number 52, and it's offered with an estimate of 350 to 450 pounds. Lot number 40, here we go. We've got some nine karat gold Victorian moss agate earrings. The lovely dramatic pieces, obviously with the sort of wire work surround and those are tassels, typical of uh, Victorian pieces. Really great, obviously moss agate panels. Usually these are cracked or chipped, but they, uh, they're in good condition, these ones. Great pattern to them. So these are offered at a steal. They're 100 to 200 pounds. And again, lot number 19 then is a uh, set of uh, morning jewellery. So these feature obviously a banded agate cabochon, a lovely uh, sort of white border to the cabochon there. And then you've got your enamel Greek key surround and obviously your uh, in memory of, obviously on the brooch surround there, the inner layer, and then around the band of the ring. But yeah, uniquely, these have both got the um, inscription to them, obviously commemorating the same individual. Sister to the back of the brooch, in memory of my sister. So very poignant um, pieces and really quite special having the, the pair together. Again, on the back of this one, you've got your hair. Back of this one, unfortunately, he's vacant. So yeah, beautiful set and had a lot of interest in this already. Um, this is offered at 250 to 350 pounds. We've got a nice jemmy tray to finish. So where do we start with this one? I'll possibly show you this ring first. We've had loads of interest in this one today in particular. It's a lovely sapphire ring. This came from one of the collectors I mentioned earlier. Really, really gorgeous, lovely blue hue. It really is a fantastic deep colour. It is set in 18 karat gold and it is uh, offered at a steal at seven to nine hundred pounds. This is lot number 112. This one has also been really popular, this kaleidoscopic fan broke here. This is lot number seven. So they're ruby, fire opal, sapphire, peridot, sapphire, Sapphire, amethyst, and diamond, obviously. So That's really uh, colourful, great piece, this one. And a lot of interest in this already. <laughs> so yeah, this one's offered at 250 to £300. Moving on to lot number 86. This is a fabulous piece. The uh, vendor thought this was a citrine. We tested it and it's a yellow sapphire. So uh, a great result there. So yeah, it's surrounded by old cut diamonds. Really lovely sparkly piece. As you can see, it's perhaps a bit too sparkly for this webcam, <laughs> but it is a really lovely eye-catching piece and it's offered at four to 600 pounds. We've got here, obviously a trilogy of uh, Jemmy emeralds here. Lovely colors. We've got this one, Colombian emerald and diamond dress ring. Again, consigned from a gem collector. So we've had a verbal from GCS on this one. So it is Colombian. Really lovely, vibrant piece, this. More emeralds, we'll move on to something slightly more statement. This uh, knuckle duster here, you've got about 10 carats worth of emerald on this one. Really statement piece. People will definitely see you coming wearing this one. And again, this one's offered at two to 3,000 pounds. Lot number 102, another little emerald and diamond cluster. This time there's sort of proportionally more diamonds to this piece. Very, very wearable, very highly popular design. And that one's got an estimate of 800 to 1200 pounds, 18 karat gold set. So yeah, as you all know, the catalogue is online and uh, thank you for joining me this evening and going through the pieces.